So we've now reached the last main tutorial of this series, and now we'll finally learn how we can render out our video of After Effects and get it into a video file. So really quickly, as an example, I've created this short project. And so this is what we're gonna be rendering out. It also has a transparent background, which we can see by toggling the transparency grid. So there's multiple ways to render a video out of After Effects, and each method has their own advantages and disadvantages. And while it's not as easy as it is in Vegas to render out a video, you have more control in After Effects as to how you're going to render it out. And you also have just more options available to you than Vegas does. But before I specifically talk about the output settings, I'm going to first talk about the render settings, which are just the render settings specific to After Effects and not the file format you render it out as. So if we want to render this out, we'd go to File, Export, and Add to Render Queue. That'll open this new tab here, which is our render queue. So by default, the render queue will queue up the selected composition you have. And you could add multiple compositions to this render queue if you want, and they'd all render in succession. So you'll see here we have both render settings and output module. The render settings are going to be specifically for After Effects. So if we click on the render settings, a lot of these settings you don't need to be too concerned about. A lot of them should be pretty obvious as to what they do, but there are two I'd like to make note of. First of all, the quality option. And I believe by default when you install After Effects, this is set to best. And what that's going to do is for all layers in your project, it's going to change that layer switch of the sampling interpolation to bicubic, which was something we discussed in the layer switches tutorial. So what that's going to do, though, is it's going to ignore if you set that manually to like linear or nearest neighbor, which is super important for like if you have pixel art and you set that the nearest neighbor. And so when you render out, it's just going to look blurry instead of looking sharp for pixel art specifically. So if you have that issue, then make sure you set this the current settings rather than best. But for most cases, best should be fine. Just make note that if you're using like pixel art and you're wondering why it's looking wrong, this is probably why. Also, the other important option would be your time span. So when you add a composition to the render queue, you can change this to either use the work area you've selected in that composition or the whole length of that composition. So by default, I believe this is just at the work area. So in most cases, this should be fine, but I just wanted to make note of that. If, for example, you're rendering it and you're realizing it's rendering the whole thing when you just want the render part of it, then this would be why. So the rest of these you can take a look at on your own, see what you might want changed. A lot of the defaults should get you by just fine, though. So let's close that. And so now to get this rendered out after effects, there's multiple ways to do it. And I'm gonna have more details about this in the description since it can get pretty technical. But the different ways you can render it out are either by rendering it from Adobe Media Encoder from here, which comes with Creative Cloud when you install After Effects. You can render a lossless video file out of After Effects that you can then later encode to a lossy video file. You can render an image sequence out of After Effects or you can use a third-party plugin that will render like an mp4 directly out of After Effects. And so the first and last option here, I'm not going to cover since they're not specific to After Effects necessarily. So if you want the render out of Adobe Media Encoder or use a third-party plugin such as Vocoder, which will let you render like an mp4 directly out of After Effects, I'll have links in the description for more details if you want to learn about those. So the two render methods here are specific to After Effects, and those are the lossless video files and image sequences. So to set up our output module, let's click on the output module over here. So a lot of the settings here you don't need to worry about except for your format. And so in your format dropdown, you have all these options to choose from. For the, our first example, we'll use the QuickTime format, which is probably the easiest one to work with for a lossless video file. And the only other important option to note is if the format supports it and you want to render out your composition with a transparent background, if it had one, or an alpha channel rather, you can click on this channels dropdown and choose RGB plus alpha, and that will include the alpha channel with it. If it's just at the RGB, then it's going to use the background color you have set of the composition. So for example, here it's gray. 
But if I rendered that with an alpha channel, then this would be transparent as I showed earlier. So for this example, we'll just render as RGB. The rest of these options should be fine, so we'll click OK. And then we can just choose where we want to output this file. So the default folder I have set up right now is fine, so we'll just click on Save. And then we can render this out. So we can go over here to open it. So that was an example of rendering a lossless video file. And so with this method, because our video file ends up being about 50 megabytes just for being two seconds long, you'd want to then convert this into a proper video file you can then upload. Which you can do with something like Adobe Media Encoder, FFmpeg, there's a lot of different options you have. So this method does work. But ideally, you'd really want to convert this into a proper video file after you render it out of After Effects. So the second method I'll talk about is rendering out an image sequence, which I personally think is the best option for multiple reasons, which I'll explain in a moment. So the render out image sequence, let's first duplicate the item we have in our render queue right now so we can then change the settings. We'll click on the output module. And here for the format, we'll set this the TIFF sequence. You can also choose the PNG sequence option, but because a TIFF file is uncompressed and PNG is compressed, it will take more time to render because it's going to compress each frame, whereas TIFF is just gonna spit them out as it goes. So I would recommend using a TIFF sequence when rendering an image sequence. And we'll also choose RGB plus alpha for the channels option on this one. So we'll click OK. Once again, we can choose where you want to save this. So the default folder here is fine. And then we'll render this. So now if we look at our files, so you see we have all these image files and they're numbered by their respective frame number. So if we open one of these, then we can just arrow through it. You'll see it just rendered out each frame as its own image. And you'll see because we enabled RGB plus alpha that this also rendered with an alpha channel. So while again, this does require you to render this out into a video file afterward, the major advantage an image sequence has is if your render ever crashes in the middle of rendering, which is likely to happen eventually, you will only have to continue from where your render left off because all it is is image files. And so you can just continue off from the last frame it stopped at. And even beyond that, if you like changed a specific part of your video, and just want to render that part out only, you can just render that as an image sequence and then you don't have to worry about rendering the other frames. So you don't have to re-render your entire video over and over again each time you make a change. So it's just a lot more efficient. And then once you're sure you've made all the changes you want to make, then you can render out the final video with the image sequence. And one thing to note too is because you're only rendering out images and it doesn't include audio, if you want to render the audio, all we'd have to do is, in our output module, we'd create a second render and set the format to a WAV file. And then that'll just render the audio directly out of After Effects. So these are just two methods of rendering out video of After Effects. The other two methods I mentioned were, first we can render this in Adobe Media Encoder, which we could just do by clicking on this Q and AME button. Or the other option is using a third party plugin like Vocoder, which will let you directly render an MP4 out of After Effects. So both those methods have advantages and disadvantages. I provide some information in the description, but I'll mostly leave it up to you as to decide what render method you'd like to use and what fits your situation best. So that about covers it for rendering. And in the next tutorial, which should be our last one, I'll be explaining my workflow for making YTPMVs and some of my tips and tricks along the way.